Hello, this is a video on identifying linear functions. We are going to investigate and see how to identify what type of function qualifies as linear. As you know, we started learning about relations, and we know that relations are any set of ordered pairs. And some relations qualify as a function. To qualify as a function, a relation has to have each input give back exactly one output. In other words, this means no x values are repeated. There are many different types of functions you are going to learn about throughout your math career. Specifically in eighth grade, we are going to focus on linear functions. You've actually already been working with linear functions for quite some time. We're just learning about their official name and label today. We've talked about how in the word linear, is the word line. A linear function is a graph that has a straight line. So all four of these examples are examples of linear functions. As you can see with each one of these, they're straight lines either increasing, decreasing, or just flat with zero change. These are all linear functions. Nonlinear functions are functions that do not have a straight line graph. They have a curve of some sort. They might make a V shape, but they are not straight lines. Do both linear and nonlinear functions pass the vertical line test? The answer to that is yes. Every graph you see on this page right now is a function. These all pass the vertical line test. So they're all functions, they're just different types of functions. So it's pretty easy to determine a linear function from a graph, you just look for a straight line. So our official definition for a linear function is a linear function is a function with a constant rate of change. It's a function with a constant rate of change. What this means is that my x values and my y values are changing at a constant rate. So a constant rate of change, we've talked about this before, we know constant rate of change is another word for slope. What this means is that the change in y and divided by the change in x is consistent, okay? So it's gonna be the same change in y divided by the same change in x each time. And we have four ways we can represent a linear function. The first is through a table. The second is through a graph. The third is through an equation. And the fourth is through words or a word problem. And we're gonna look more at the words later on, Today, we're gonna to focus on tables and equations. We've already talked about how to find a linear function from a graph, and that's literally looking for a straight line. So let's dive in how to find a linear function from a table or an equation. So a table is pretty consistent. What we are looking for is a constant rate of change, okay? Otherwise, Forget words left and right, letters left and right. Constant rate of change. Otherwise, what this means is we are looking for the change in y, delta y, divided by delta x to be the same each time. Okay, so it's very easy to do this. First thing we're going to do is that with the tables, we're going to look at what are my x's changing by. So here, all of my x's are changing by plus one. That looks very promising. So two to three is plus one, three to four is plus one, four to five is plus one, and five to six is plus one. My y's, one to two is plus one, two to three is plus one, four to five is plus one, and five to six is plus one. So when I do the ratio of the change in y to the change in x, I'm gonna have one divided by one, which is one, one divided by one, which is one, one divided by one, which is one, and one divided by one, which is one. These values all are the same. 
this table has a constant rate of change, so it is linear, okay? We already know it's a function because none of the x values repeat. Now we know it's a linear function and this graph will be a straight line, okay? Let's do our next one. Change in y, divide it by change in x. So my x's are changing by plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. My y's are changing by minus three, minus three, plus four, plus two. Okay, so let's check this out. Negative three divided by one is negative three. That's the change in y divided by the change in x. Always remember that the change in y is in the numerator. All right, negative three divided by one is negative three. So far, so good. But then I come to four divided by one is four. Okay, this is not a constant rate of change. So what this means is, yes, this is a function because none of my x's repeat, but this is a non-linear function. Okay, so it's a function, it's just not a linear function. So it could maybe be a curve, it could maybe be just different points, but it's not linear. All right, over here, change in y, divide it by change in x. Change in y, plus two, plus eight, plus one, plus four. Now I know you're probably like, well, that's not the same, but we, we're not looking at just the change in x. We're looking at the ratio in change in y to change in x. So this eight to 10 is plus two, 10 to 18 is plus eight, 18 to 19 is plus one, and 19 to 23 is plus four. So when I do this ratio of change in y to change in x, I have two divided by two, which is one. I have eight divided by eight, which is one. I have one divided by one, which is one. And I have four divided by four, which is one. So as you see, when we did the ratio, we simplified it, it did have a constant rate of change. Every time my rate of change was one. So this did have a constant rate of change. So this is a linear function. Okay, so the big thing I need you to realize is that these are all functions. We are just determining which ones are straight line linear functions and which ones are not. So for a table, we always find the change in y divided by the change in x and we see that they are the same. So how do we determine if an equation is a linear function? For an equation to be a linear function, it must pass three rules, okay? The first rule is no exponents other than one. That's our first rule. Our second rule is no symbols. Our third rule is no x times y or x in the denominator. So if it follows these rules, it is a linear function. So let's check this out. Number one. Number one is y equals 2x plus 3. So looking at this equation, there's no exponents other than one. There's no symbols. There's no x times y or x in the denominator. So number one is linear. All right, number two, y equals two x squared plus three. Well, I see an exponent greater than one right here. So that breaks the first rule. So that means this is a nonlinear function. All right, y equals four thirds x plus three. I don't see any exponents other than one. I don't see any symbols. And I don't see any x's in the denominator. There is a denominator here, but x is not in it. Three is in it. So this passes all my rules. This is a linear function. All right, number four, y equals four divided by x plus three. There's no exponents other than one. There's no symbols, but there is an x in the denominator. So this is nonlinear. Number five, y equals x. No exponents other than one, no symbols, no x times y, no x in the denominator, 
this is linear. So what I want you guys to take a minute to do is pause this video and try six through 10. See if you can identify them as linear or nonlinear, and then we'll go over them together. So hopefully you pause this if you've had a chance to answer these. So let's go over these. Number six, you have an X times Y. That is clearly against the rules. Number six is nonlinear. Number seven, you have a 5X minus 3Y equals eight. I don't see any exponents other than one. I don't see any symbols. I don't see any X times Y or X to the denominator. This is linear. Number eight, y equals the cube root of 3x minus 2. The cube root is a symbol. So this is non-linear. This is one of those symbols we're not allowed to have. All right, number nine. This is a big problem. It's definitely not in slope-intercept form, but there's no exponents other than one. There's no symbols. And there's no x times y or x to the denominator. So this is linear. And last but not least, the y equals the absolute value of 3x plus 2. The absolute value is a symbol, so this is nonlinear. So this is how we determine if an equation is linear or nonlinear. So the last thing I have for you to do is you have eight questions here. Take a second, pause this video. I want you to try and answer these eight questions. And then restart the video, and we'll go over them together. So hopefully you've taken a moment or a few moments and you've answered these questions. So circle the equations that are linear. In this list, only number one and number three are linear. Okay, I know you see parentheses here for f of x, but that is not part of the equation on the right side. So we don't have to worry about that, okay? So, those are both linear. Number two is nonlinear because it has the exponent greater than one. And number four is nonlinear because it has a symbol. All right, number five, write an equation that would be linear. This answer could be anything you want it to be as long as there's no exponents other than one, symbols, or x times y. So y equals 2x plus 1, y equals 5, anything like this would be linear. All right, write an equation that would be nonlinear. This would be any equation that included an exponent other than one, a symbol, or x times y, or x to the denominator. Number seven, determine if the table represents a linear function. This is review from that second set of examples. Um, again, we're looking for a constant rate of change or change in y over change in x. Our x's were changing by plus two and plus four. And then our y's were changing by minus one and plus four. So we do the rate of change. We have negative one divided by two and four divided by four. So these are not going to simplify to the same thing. So this is non-linear. Hopefully you got that one right too. And then last but not least, is just a pretty easy review. Does the following set of order pairs represent a function? Well, if I look at my x values, negative three, zero, eight, negative seven, negative 10, and eight. I see that I have repeats in the eight. So this is not a function. And if it's not a function, there's no way it's linear, okay? So it's not a function, so it's definitely nonlinear. So we don't even have to check for it to be linear if it's not a function. So hopefully this video helps you with your quiz today and helps you understand the difference between a linear function and a nonlinear function. Have a good day.